Welcome back to the channel guys. Are you finished with your body filler? It's time to spray the car and primer and start block sanding that out to get a mirror finish. In today's video, we're gonna talk about all the tricks at Sylvester's Customs that most shops won't wanna share with you. Have you ever seen a car at a show that's fully restored only to get close and see all of the paint imperfections? Today we want to make sure that's not going to be your project. We're going to dive deep in all of the little technical tips that Sylvester's Customs does to make sure that your car is a mirror finish. So this is our first prime on the 55 after body filler work has been completed. We want to talk about the product that we like to use. Again, this is not the only product that you have to use but VP2050 from the Vibrance PPG line, in my opinion, again, not the only one, is a really, really good product, and here's why. Most shops will use polyesters after body filler, and then they have to go to urethanes and sealers. This is a one-stop shop product. Yes, it is expensive, but when we are talking about how many products are you gonna buy to put on the body filler after you're done with that stage, this is one. So instead of having four or five different materials that have an area to fail, this is one. And it just eliminates that completely. The thing that we really like about it is that if you have body filler that you have gone through with, uh, and you have a couple areas of bare metal showing, this is covering all of those bases with one product. So as we go through and you start blocking this down, um, you have a very, very good mill thickness. This is a two to one versus a four to one. It's like spraying honey. And when you're spraying it, some of the tip sizes that you're gonna want is anything between like a 1.6 and a 2.0. And you're gonna want, depending on how good your body work is, anywhere from three to four coats of this epoxy to be able to get the coverage that you want. Again, the goal is you're trying to do one prime. So get your body work as good as you can and then come in with this to make sure you can dial everything in. The amount of time that you should wait to take this primer down with block sanding um, is anywhere between three days and five days. There's been guys out there like Colton Davidson that did shrinkage tests on this material and it's superior compared to some of the other ones like Sickens and, and uh, there are a few others that he names. But the big reason is you want to make sure this is completely dry and it's not going to soak up. Soak up meaning when you're putting this down, this primer and every other product has solvents in those products and those solvents have to escape. They have to have time to fully cure. And when they cure and they shrink, you don't want to start blocking this the next day and everything look laser straight. And then you come back say a week later and now it's fully dry. That thing will actually start to cure and shrink and your body work is no longer crisp. It'll start seeing ripples and waves. Um, so that is just one of the main things to really think about with this product. When you are done spraying the epoxy, let's call it three coats for this particular project. That's what we did. You're going to want to use either an aerosol guide coat or a powder guide coat. And that's what we have here is, again, this is powder. It comes in a uh, applicator that you can wipe on and then you have the spray. We like the SEM, but again, you can use any guide coat. The big thing is you do not want to be using spray paint. And by spray paint, I don't mean, guide coat is different than spray paint. If you use like say a flat black and you think that's good, you're gonna gum up all of your paper and you're just gonna be wasting material there. This is specifically designed to be a guide on your uh, epoxied surface. I like to do a spray guide coat black initially back to back right after I finish epoxying. That way it's wet on wet and it, and it really dries the full week. This particular example, the reason that I didn't do it is because I wanna show you guys how good the finish is on the side of this car before we actually start. So we will be using the guide coat and it does dry super fast. And we will just be guide coating this whole thing, every little nook and cranny that you need to cover to make sure you don't have any lows. This is going to be showing you where your lows are in the body working stage of the primer. So be sure to use the correct product and then cover the whole car evenly. 
The reason that we don't use the powder in this stage is because of the sheen, it really does not stick. I mean, it puts a, such a light coat, you can't even really see it. And that's why I like to use it initially with the spray. After you get through that very top coat that has the sheen and it's now dulled out, powder is the way to go. It's a lot easier to sand, doesn't clog your paper. So that's what you wanna do with that. After you've gotten the car completely guide coated, and for us, we're gonna use the aerosol can. We wanna talk about what papers are we using to block sand this down. I would recommend anything from 120 grit all the way we're gonna go through the spectrum of 120, 150, 220, and I usually go from 220 to either a 400 or a 500 in the wet sand stage. Again, everybody can do this different ways. It's all about getting to the mirror finish at the end, right? So this is what works for us. As you get these papers, um, there are different grades. Some are more expensive than others. Use the variety, see what works for you, what you like, because you wanna make sure that you're using a new paper. So don't be the guy who's super frugal. Maybe you gotta use a cheaper brand paper and just keep changing that out more. The big thing in this stage, I would say not more so, but this is where you dial in the very, very faint details about your mirror finish. You don't want those little wrinkles and you wanna see the perfect light representation from panel to panel. That's why you need to make sure you use a very new paper that is cutting. You need to be hearing it cut. If it just sounds like it's dull and it's kind of rubbing, you're creating other issues. When it comes to the papers that you're going to use, it is crucial that you finish your body work. I like to finish in 150 grit before you go to prime. And the reason it is as that soaks up, into those scratches, it dries. And that is why you get those sand scratches at a show, right? You go to the car and it looks great from 10 feet, but as you get closer, you start seeing all the modeling and the sand scratches that that paint product has gone in. So you may not wanna beat up your paint and body guy if he's taking a little bit longer because it is helping you on your dry times and shrinkage. Those things will come back and haunt you. So make sure everything's completely dry and again, you wanna step every grid up, making sure that you're removing the scratch before. The way I like to see it is, I start with 120 to cut through the little bit of orange peel that we have and also make a smooth surface. The thing is, as soon as you go from 120 to 150, you're no longer trying to get rid of orange peel, you're trying to get rid of scratches. From there on up, it's just removing scratches and refining your finish. Before we get started, a disclaimer is always be using proper safety equipment. You need to be using a good dust mask, whether it be a dust particle separator in your mask or a charcoal filter mask. So use that, gloves to keep your oils off the car, I'm trying to touch your face when you go in the car. And uh, if you need safety glasses, wear safety glasses. Work whatever works for you, but don't be inhaling this stuff. It's super bad for your health. When it comes to picking the block, what are we looking for and why? Well, first thing is you always wanna be using, especially for a mirror finish, stick it, meaning sticky back sandpaper on a acrylic or a polycarbonate block, not a Velcro or a hook it. Those two will leave you inconsistencies and ripples in your finish. We're talking about microns of differences as you're blocking. So picking that block and using a stick it is super crucial to what you're gonna get on the end finish. And recently we have, I would say more blocks the better. We have every brand that you can think of, but the two that I've really come to like, especially in the bodywork and the blocking of primer stages is actually linear blocking tools as well as next level blocks. And the reason that I like those is because some blocks have a handle and these blocks, the handle is evenly spaced and it has slits to where the block will flex. The other thing I like about it is you have different thicknesses on the acrylic and or the polycarbonate blocks depending on which ones you buy. These are a stick it, not a Velcro. So picking your block for the panel, you want to make sure you are putting the block on and it is the longer the block and the thicker the block, the straighter the car. So if you have a big long area, you always, I like to typically start in the middle in between your fender wells or I start in the middle of the back of the car or the front of the car. 
but picking the block that fits the panel, again, use the block that fits the car the best. You do not want to be using a block that is so rigid that it rocks. It needs to contour. So the thickest block that contours to that curve. The reason that I like these and next level blocks is because of how it fits in your hand and it's evenly spaced. That's a big thing. Sometimes you have a handle on either end and it will cause deflection in the middle where it's not touching. These blocks, you can't really grab super hard and that's what makes them ideal. It's hard to see because it's dusty. There's a foam grip on the next level blocks as well as an acrylic that comes in different thicknesses. Obviously the thicker the block, the straighter that it is. But it's nice because in this stage, we are a very light touch with the blocks, no matter what you're using. And spend the time to make sure you catch all of the details as you're blocking. One thing we do have that Colton Davidson has been generous enough to do is he gave us a discount code. So for you guys that wanna purchase a linear blocking tool, he has an array of tools. There is a discount code in the description, check it out. So next we're gonna talk about the finesse that it takes to create these perfect shapes. At this point, we're going to guide coat the car with the aerosol and we will come back and pick 120 grit on the block and start from there. All right, so we have the car guide coated with an aerosol guide coat. We now have 120 grit on our linear blocking tools. The other thing that is a little bit different is I've noticed that the linear blocking tools are just a skosh narrower than the other blocks. And the reason that's good is when you're rolling into areas that might have a roll, maybe you're in a fender lip, you can use that sandpaper over the edge to very carefully create the shape that you want. So you want the block even, evenly spaced, light pressure, and you want to block this car in a 30 degree to 40 to five degree X pattern if you can. Not all cars need an X pattern, but if you can do it, it's definitely gonna create a better shape. So go through, block that down, and then the big thing is, how do you know when to stop blocking? I'm gonna talk about it and then I'm gonna show it because I don't wanna to have to have the respirator on. As you're blocking this down, you're using the guide coat as a guide to show you where any inconsistencies and lows are going to be. If you start seeing bare metal show and or body filler, in this case, you're gonna see body filler. We've skim coated the entire car very thin. And as you see body filler show up, that should be your, your ground level, your baseline that you do not wanna go beyond. You want to make sure that you're doing everything as even as you can. And if that means blocking the car and doing a sidestep back and forth, big stroke, long block that fits the panel evenly. You want everything to block out as evenly as possible. You do not want to sit down here and focus because what will happen is if you are using a light source to view your panel, if you sit there and focus in one spot, it's going to create inconsistencies. That is how you know where to stop. We are going to put a mask on and we are gonna block this car out and show you what those inconsistencies look like. You're going to see everything from the spray pattern the stripes in your spray gun to every time you put body filler on and off, everything should be even at the end, but you're going to see all those inconsistencies show up right away. All right, what you're looking at here is just, I mean, we're talking two minutes of block sanding with 120 grit to get a representation of what is there and what needs to be blocked down. You can see where we have come back and added some more body filler and maybe it didn't get feathered out just right here. You can see imperfections in whether it been a bug that I tried to swipe out of the primer or whatever it is, you can see Maybe I was filling pinholes with this epoxy and it got a little bit orange peeled. All of this stuff is going to block out with that block as long as you keep doing it evenly and uniformly. 
the one thing I want to talk about is most people tell you take your bare hand and we want you to fill the whole panel and tell me what you feel. Two things. You want your gloves because of your oils in your hands will cause delamination issues. The other thing is we're trying to retrain your brain to rely on guide coat. As long as you're doing that even pressure and the guide coat is showing you what you need, you need to remember the guide coat is not going to lie. Again, this is 120 grit, but we will do this in 120 grit until things look super close to even and uniform, meaning there won't be any of these inconsistencies. We will guide coat with a dry powder again over this and we will upgrade to 150. When that blocks out and there's no sand scratches showing, we will guide coat again to 220 grit and block that out until everything is a uniform pattern. Now, before I jump into what happens if you go through bare metal, go to the description. We have added links to the products, companies, and tools. And also like and subscribe this video so that way you get the notifications for upcoming videos. All right, back to what happens if you go through bare metal or what happens if body filler is showing. Can you go directly to a sealer? Should you not? Pros and cons is gonna be, if you have an area where you have a bare metal spot and or filler showing, you are going to have halos. The tip that I wanna bring up is that if you have those, maybe you're fixing a blemish in paint or you're in the body primer stage, you have to seal those things up. Again, this is approved for bare metal, so you can come back in if it's only one area that you need to fix and you can blend out that area of either body filler and or metal. But keep in mind, you need to make sure that you have the correct amount of dry time for those. Yes, can you go over it and seal it and paint it? Yes, you can. And it will look good that day. But as things dry and shrink, those will come back and you will start to see halos and rings. And then you will end up color sanding and polishing the clear to try to eliminate those to show, but you will never fully get them out. The trick to eliminating that is put a good amount of primer, feather your edges, come back and even block sand it back out to make sure that you have a smooth canvas before you roll into sealers and paint. Once you finish in 220, wet sanding is gonna be the next stage. And we're gonna be putting that out in the near future. In the meantime, check out the link if you are looking to how to select the correct sanding block for your project. Till next time, you guys have a good one.